AEAC is made possible by JSB Match Diablo, Predator International, Splatterburst Targets, FX Airguns, Sports Match Rings UK, and H&N Sport. You guys know the best way to thank them. Hey guys, sorry I missed you last week. Tropical Storm Emily came through and decided to dump 8 inches of rain in the area where I film over 3 days and then uh, in a, a day 4 just a regular old Florida thunderstorm came by and dumped another 2 so I, uh, I was back out there Friday checking it again and, and it's still just totally underwater so rather than just wasting all these weeks I thought I would try to get in front of you a little bit today and help with a question that I am noticing is becoming pattern on the channel or a couple of questions and one of them revolves around um, the air guns that I get for review and if they're any different than what you guys get for review and to answer your question very directly something I requested of all of our sponsors is that I didn't get anything special because I wanted to make sure that um, when I review an air gun that is very true to life and to what you're going to be experiencing in the air gun that you get um, there are some exceptions to that. For example, companies like Rapid Air Weapons and Air Guns of Arizona, it is part of their normal business model to test air guns and to make sure that they're functioning properly before they send them to the retail customer. But normal organizations like Pyramid Air, Air Gun Depot, Hatsan USA, Crossman Corp, when they send guns to me, they're drop shipped to me straight out of the warehouse, just like they would be drop shipped to you. And when I get them, the barrels are all filled with gunk and black gunk and just like they would be for you guys, you know, that protective coating that keeps them safe, you know, as they're traveling overseas to, to get here. So um, the answer is I don't get anything special. I think maybe the difference might be in that how I'm able to get them to all perform at a very high level, whether they cost $200 or $100 is maybe two things. One, that I spend six days a week shooting air guns for the last 14 or 15 months. So, you know, you tend to get good at something you do all the time. But two, um, there's a way that I approach the air gun in the pre preparation of the barrel and the preparation of selecting the proper ammunition for that barrel to where regardless of price point, I seem to be able to get the gun to perform very well at distances like 50 and 100 yards. So what I thought I'd do is um, uh, be just totally transparent with you guys on, on what I do to prepare the guns for review and shed a little bit of light on the review process and how I go about it. And hopefully you can take all of that and learn from it and apply it at home and enjoy your air guns just as much as, uh, as I do um, mine. But it all kind of starts with um, cleaning barrels. Like I mentioned, um, this is a gun from Sweden. This is the new FX Crown. These come a long way. Um, some air guns come by boat, some are FedExed in aircrafts. So there's different ways of getting here, but when a typical air gun comes from say, Turkey or England or uh, China or wherever it may be, you know, they come by boat and they can be out in the ocean for several months. So the manufacturers will totally coat the barrels with this black gunk. And um, you, you shouldn't have the expectation that the gun will perform at a very high level with that in the barrel you know, before you remove it. That's not saying it won't. There are people that shoot their guns right out of the box with that stuff in the barrel and they perform very well. But because I have a lot of time invested in the review process and I have so much work to get to, there's always a backlog of five or six guns, um, you know, for us to review for you guys. I need to uh, attack it with some methodology so that I'm getting through it and getting the best possible, possible performance out of the gun and at the same time make sure that it's nothing special or different than, uh, than what you guys would get. So the way I go about it is I always um, clean the barrel first thing and I clean it very thoroughly. Now my cleaning system um, I came across a couple of years ago. It's, uh, it's called Patchworm and it's basically a weed eater string where you pull a patch uh, uh, through the gun and it cleans uh, the barrel for you. The patch can be soaked in WD-40. I've heard people soaking them in Goo Gone. I've heard people soaking them in Croil and Ballastol and, and, all, and Napier and you know they're probably all okay but the main thing you want to make sure is that whatever um, cleaning agent or lubricant you use to soak your cleaning patches, that it doesn't negatively affect anything in the air gun. Um, the most sensitive component to all of this 
are the seals that are in here, and some products can deteriorate those seals. I have had very good luck with Ballastol. This is a very safe cleaner lubricant that can be used on wood, metal, plastic, bluing, painted surfaces, rubber, silicone. It doesn't hurt any of it. I've been using it for years and years and years. It's what I use to clean all of my videos, all my videos, all of my guns before I, you know, I put them on YouTube for you guys. And um, I have nothing but great things to say about it. It comes in an oil with a little squirt bottle and it comes in an aerosol too. Now I've noticed that the aerosol um, it's mixed with a carrier, which is probably a solvent of some kind. This seems to have a little bit more cleaning power than this, but that being said, I use this 90% of the time and only use this when I have a barrel that's really, really, really bad. This is also more cost effective and I'm not sponsored by these guys, so I have to pay for this and patchworm just like you guys would and I wanna make sure that a little goes a long way. But what makes patchworm so different than the typical weed eater string where you'd pull a patch through the barrel is a couple of things. One, these guys right here, these little plastic collars um, will actually fit onto this string and give your patch the uh, proper clearance and tolerances as it's being pushed or pulled through the barrel. In other words, these little, um, these little collars here put pressure on the outer walls of your barrel with the patch, so you're actually getting a better scrub and a better clean. And Patchworm even sells, um, you know, these little felt pads which you can pull through as well. And these are important because a regular old patch isn't going to get past the um, the rings or you know the rifling. Excuse me. Inside, the, I'm a car guy, so I said rings there. Sorry, <laughs> I'm thinking cars 90% of the time too. But the um, the these won't clean well past the um, the um, rifling inside your barrel and that's why it's important to have these guys because they'll actually press past the rifling and scrub the walls of your barrel and that's important if you get like some lead fouling in between the rifling and the wall that can detract from the accuracy of your pellet so you want to use the two together but um, when you get your patch warm it'll say right on there that these different collars are sized for 20 cal, 22, 243 to 284, 308 to 348 355 to 40 cal, 41 to 45, 50 to 54, and even this big guy here, um, 12 gauge shotgun. So it's a very versatile cleaning system. I also like to use with it two inch cleaning patches from Otis. It kind of like um, it kind of like uh, ups the performance of the cleaning system because it's a bigger patch. So now it's putting more pressure on the walls of your barrel as you're pulling through your little uh, your little tolerance. Uh, collar here so it's giving you even um, even better even better cleaning but um, the way I, I go about it is when I get a gun just like you guys um, it is caked normally the barrel is caked with the coatings they put in there that protect it in freight but detract from accuracy so I like to get all of that out and I will normally spend um, two days doing that because I want to make sure that when I go and video it, the gun is performing at its absolute highest. And so what I'll do is I'll grab some of these patches. I'll usually grab a stack of maybe five to ten of them. Okay. And I don't want them dripping wet, but I want them thoroughly coated in oil. So I'll coat the oil on there and then I'll take a minute. I'll squirt the oil and then I'll take a minute and I'll knead it into this uh, material. I don't know what it is. It feels like it's cotton or felt or something. I don't want it so runny that when I pull this patch through, all the oil leaks out of the barrel, down the transfer port, and into the mechanism of the gun. It's not like it probably won't hurt the gun, but what it will do is as you fire the gun and as you're testing for accuracy, it's going to be continually coughing up that oil into the barrel, which can definitely detract from the gun's consistency. Now, a lot of people will tell you that guns, uh, some barrels shoot better with lubricated pellets, so they like a coating of oil in the barrel, and that is probably true. And I've found that in some instances over the years, but what I have also found is that I've never come across a gun that I haven't been able to get to perform without lubricating pellets. It's just a matter of getting the barrel in the right state of cleanliness, and it's a matter of finding the pellet that uh, that, that gun wants. So I've got my patches. They're um, lightly soaked in oil. This is a 25 caliber, this crown. So I'll grab a 25 caliber cleaning, um, 
cleaning pellets, I think, is what people call these. Some people actually fire these out of their gun. I've never done that. By the way, this patch worm also comes in 177. It comes with its own kit that doesn't use a collar. It's just a string that is sized for, uh, for 177. But I'll lubricate this, this little felt pad here. Make sure it's coated really well. All right. And then this is a 25 cal air gun, so I'm going to grab the 25 cal collar. They're all color coded. I just know from being around the system for a long time that the black one is, uh, is 25 cal. And then what makes these strings so cool is, yeah, it's just weed eater string, I think like anyone else uses, but eight tenths of the way down, down the string is there's a stop. Okay, and what you'll do is you'll uh, thread your collar onto the string all the way until it comes down to that stop. All right, the, the tip is pointed so that you're able to puncture the cleaning patch. All right, you want to get it nice and centered on the patch, and you want to move it all the way down to that collar, and then take your tip that's also soaked in oil, move it all the way down, and this is now your cleaning mechanism. And what's really cool is this collar will press this patch outward to match the diameter of your barrel, so you're getting the best possible clean to get any kind of accuracy detracting gunk out of there. Now, um, this crown um, uses a shrouded barrel, and uh, this one doesn't have any baffles in it. It doesn't need it because it's an extending um, shroud, so the gun is really quiet um, with that system, but a lot of guns will have um, baffles in here, and the problem is when you thread the weed eater string up through there, it'll get caught in the baffles, and you won't be able to pull it all the way through. So the way you get around that is by use of a drinking straw, which I'll show you um, probably on the next gun, but maybe on this one, depending on how things go. But the first, first thing you want to do is you want to cock the gun, make sure that the gun is on safe, give it a check because you don't want the thing going off while, um, while your patch is up in there, and then take the pointy end and carefully thread it up into the breech of the rifle. Now, it's sharp, so you want to make sure you're not stabbing your O-ring repeatedly and reducing the life of that O-ring or in any way um, compromising its seal. Now, I'm going to slide this up here. I'm able to get it that far, and you'll notice it is stopped. And the reason it stopped is because right up here, there's a, um, a little air diffuser, which redirects air down into the shroud that quiets the gun. And I'm not able to get past that, so what I'll do is I'll take my drinking straw, Nothing special about this one. I think we just got them at Walmart. And I will use it to bypass that um, little diffuser in there to give the weed eater string smooth passage and smooth clearance through that, okay? And then I will get this felt cleaning pad and I will actually start, I will push it into the breech just a little bit, all right? The reason why you wanna line all this up, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it um, to where it's seated into the breech opening, and I'm going to give it a little push on the string here and a little pull on this end to get it in there. You don't want to just be blindly pulling on that because you may not be lined up properly, and um, you're doing a lot of pulling for nothing and wondering why it's not moving forward. And then what I'll do is pulling on this very straightly, if straightly is a word, okay, and slowly I want to move it through the air gun's barrel. The reason I want to pull on it straight is because um, if I pull down, I may be cutting into the plastic with either the crown of the barrel or the end of the shroud here. And I wanna pull it slowly to give that pad and that chemical time to work on the outer walls of that barrel. And you saw how easy, easily that was. And there's a good bit of force in there because this is scrubbing the heck out of the inside of this barrel. Now, I actually prepped this barrel um, for video last week and it is still, you can see it there, it is still pulling up the little stripes there from FX's new Smooth Twist X system that runs the length of the, of the barrel. It's actually grabbing rings and it's pulling stuff off of, those, off of those rings. Now, these barrels may shoot great without any cleaning, but they may need cleaning, but I always err on the side of caution and I clean them before I get started. Now, I will, um, I'll take this off because these cost a little bit of money. I'll reverse the patch so I'm using the other side and I will do the exact same thing again. I'll push it up through and on a dirty barrel you may need five of the, uh, you may, may, may need three or four or five of these guys and you may need 10 or 15 cleaning patches. I don't alternate wet dry, wet dry, wet dry because I don't over oil the patches. I just make sure that they're 
they're lightly coated. And I've had really good success in doing that without having a lot of oil run down into the uh, breech of, of my air gun. Now again, I'll take just a second, make sure that that collar is lined up. And you'll see, as I pull on this, it's got the perfect tolerance and it's just pulling right on through there, scrubbing those walls nice and clean. Now sometimes if I get a really dirty or rusty barrel, which air guns commonly come coated in rust in that black gunk that protects them in freight, I'll pull my 10 or 15 patches through, get it eight tenths of the way there, and then I will let it sit overnight. I'll let it sit overnight um, or sometimes two nights or maybe even three to really loosen that stuff up and then I'll go back at it. And then here's the key. Once you feel like you've got the barrel clean, you have to get all the oil out of the system, okay? So you're gonna to wanna to dry fire it probably five times, which is what I do. And what that does is that, that moves the air up and through the system and clears out any oil that has fallen down into the transfer port and, and into the receiver and it blows out the transfer port and gets all that, bar all that oil moving out of, um, of the barrel, okay? And then I'm gonna focus on pulling dry patches through here. And that's where I really like these two inch Otis's because they're bigger, okay? So they're more, absor more absorbent and I'm gonna get all the oil out of that barrel. If I, I have found that if I leave oil in there, it mucks with my shot to shot consistency as far as accuracy goes, okay? And um, so you wanna take some time, get it very, very dry. And really, that's the first part of the uh, magic on how I've been successful in, uh, in getting pretty much any gun that comes my way to uh, perform. Make sure the barrel's clean, make sure it's completely dry and free of any oil. See, I've got that patch in there now and I'm gonna slowly move it through to give it time to pull all the oil off of the walls of that barrel. And I may use four or five of them and I'll reverse them and and do whatever I gotta do to, uh, to, get it, to get it squeaky clean, all right? So that's the first part. The second part is, of course, I spend a lot of time here culling pellets, all right? And what that means is we're really lucky here at AEAC to have the backing of H&N Sport Pellets and JSB and Predator International. So they keep here all their different types of pellets. So it enables me to find each gun's preferred pellet, and that is another large piece of the battle, and I will typically spend one to two days doing that at 25 yards before I move out to 50. I'll take little two and three shot groups, the ones that go in, I'll land in the same hole, I'll move them out to five, six, and seven shots, still at 25 yards to see if they remain consistent, and the ones that perform well at 25, I move out to 50 and make movies for us, and the ones that, that perform well at 50, I move out to uh, to 100 in the movies, and that's really that's really the process. Now, something else that I've noticed interesting is that each barrel tends to like um, a different state of cleanliness. In other words, some guns um, you clean them, and right off the bat, um, they're pellet on pellet at 50 yards. But most guns take between 10 and 20 pellets, I've noticed, to season the barrel before, before they'll start being pellet on pellet. Some guns take 100, and I'll give you two examples. The um, Brocock um, Compato, which I have here for the upcoming Review Discuss Win video and uh, in series, that's a Lothar Walther barrel. There's a match grade barrel in that gun, and that took 100 shots before it started giving me repeatable accuracy. The FX Streamline that I reviewed a while back, that's a smooth twist barrel. That one also took 100 shots before it started um, giving me really good pellet on pellet accuracy at distances like 50 and 100 yards. But I've come across smooth twist barrels which do great right out of the box, and I've come across Lothar Walthar barrels that do great you know, as soon as I've cleaned them 5, 10, 15 shots in. So that's just something you've got to be tuned into as an air gun owner. What is your barrel like? At what point does it start shooting well? And then once you get to that point, become aware of how long it'll perform at that level before the accuracy starts to go away. Sometimes it's five magazines. Sometimes it's five tins of pellet. You don't know. Every gun's a little bit different. And I'm aware of that going in before I go out and make video reviews for us and I am always shooting those guns 
in those barrels premium state just because I've spent the two or three or four days becoming familiar with the gun before I take it out to uh, to review it for uh, for the public to see. But um, guns like this uh, this crown here, you don't always have to um, service them with the barrel um, in the gun. Um, you'll notice that some brands are very service friendly and some brands are not very service friendly. Um, FX is one that does a really good job of um, being easy to get to for, uh, for air gunners. Now you'll notice a couple of grub screws here on top of the barrel. Those grub screws keep this barrel locked in place. So this is an extendable shroud, like I said, so you want to extend it, you want to rotate it. Come on, till that falls into place. There it goes, and it clicked into place. Once it clicks into place, I can rotate the shroud and unscrew it, okay? And you can see, you can see that little uh, air diffuser that pushes air down into the shroud up at the end that was getting caught, that our little um, green string was getting caught on. You can take that off by putting something soft in there like a pencil where you won't hurt it if, uh, you know, you're not going to tear, tear uh, that soft aluminum up. You don't want to put like a heavy screwdriver in there because sometimes these are on pretty tight, okay? So I can just take that off. Now I can take my screwdriver or my um, Allen here and I can undo these grub screws. You want to pull them out a pretty good little ways so that the ends of them don't catch on these O-rings in here and tear them up as you're sliding it out. Just gently pull outwards. Okay. Now I have a barrel that I can very easily service and pull that patchworm through just like I would the other one. Something cool they do on the crown here is the barrels are notched so that you know how to index them to line up the transfer port of the barrel with the transfer port of the receiver, making it very user friendly that way. Okay, but you may not always have, make sure our safe is on. You may not always have that with, uh, with all air guns. And if that's ever the case, all you do is completely remove, whoops, one of the grub screws, gotcha, okay, and take a flashlight and shine it down into the receiver. And what you want to look for is you'll see the mark that that grub screw made from the factory. You want to make sure that those are, are that that mark is aligned with the screw so that you know that your transfer port is properly indexed and you are getting full throttle, so uh, so to speak. Okay, so we're going to just put this back together and I'm going to give you one more example. Make sure that this is all, you want to make sure that these are all the way in. You don't want to over tighten them. Okay, just snug. There's not a lot of recoil in these systems. You don't want to torque anything. Same thing here. Hand tight is good. If you want to put a little bit of pressure on there with your pencil, you can. Okay, and then just very simply slide the shroud back on. Okay, put a little pressure on there so that you can thread her back on. Okay, and she is good to go. Now the cool thing with this patchworm is you can also apply it to brake barrels. This is the Diana Stealth. This comes from Air Guns of Arizona. I believe this is an exclusive to them, meaning I think they helped design it, um, co-design it with Diana. And we're going to be reviewing this on the channel soon as well as the Crown. Both of them are review discuss wins, which means um, Air Guns of Arizona is giving both of them away to one lucky winner through our buddy Michael over at Air Gun Nation. But whenever you're working with a brake barrel, um, there's a lot of mechanical tension up here. You never want to let go here because you can hit yourself in the face. The gun can come up and clobber you this way if ever there's a mechanical failure in here. Worse yet, you can lose a fingertip. Uh, we've all seen it on the forums before. So yeah, this is made in Germany. It's a very high quality brake barrel. Is it likely to ever happen? No, but um, at the same time, you don't ever want to, to risk it and, uh, and take a chance. So this is a 22 cal, so I'm going to slip on my 22 caliber collar and a lubricated patch. Okay, and you, you'll notice, you can probably see there that this barrel has a moderator on the end with baffles inside. 
All right, so this string is probably going to get hung up in those baffles, and it did right there. So we're going to keep tension on here, shove our drinking straw up in there to give the string safe passage through the baffles, back it out, try again. Sometimes it takes one or two times, and now we can work it through our system. Okay, again, you want to start it. Whoops. There's a rookie mistake. I have the black collar. <laughs> I have the black collar on top of the white collar. And I just launched the white collar. There it is. Let's try this again. Okay. So on goes our patch. And really you apply the same methodology to the brake barrel as you would a pre-charged pneumatic. Pull these oil patches through, pull the oil oiled wads through until they until you get all of the gunk out of the barrel. Not a bad idea to go outside and fire it a couple of times with a with a couple of pellets in there. You don't want to dry fire a um, a brake barrel air rifle because that can damage it. All right, and then start pulling, and then start pulling dry patches through, and you'll see. But that I've prepped this already so it's nice and clean. These were already for review. I just need my field to dry out. Safety off. Nice safe decock. And um, and uh, then we can get busy reviewing air guns again. But I just, it was important to me, it's important to me to have a very high level of trust with you guys. So I wanted complete transparency. I wanted to talk a little bit to these questions that I've been getting that have been, seem to be pattern revolving around are what you get different um, how do you get them to perform at such a high level? And, and that's what I do. I think it's just a combination of the patchworm, I'm guessing, and the ballastol, ballastol and to doing it every day and to taking my time with it and to making, making sure that there's no oil residue anywhere in the, in the system and then knowing at what point in that barrel's um, state of cleanliness or dirtiness it performs at its highest, matching it to the pellets or pellet or pellets that it's going to perform the best with and then going out and making a movie for you guys. And in that way, I'm, 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 I'm showing the air gun to the world um, in, a, in a state that it's going it's to be able to perform at its highest and, and truest potential, which to me, I feel like that's what a responsible reviewer should do. Am I taking it apart and scrubbing the barrel? And you know, No, I'm not getting into that. I'm shooting it off the shelf as you guys would. I'm just applying some basic practices. So with that... That's how I do it. Hopefully it's helpful to you and you can apply it at home and have the same success. Um, really appreciate you guys watching. Keep your fingers crossed that our field dries out and we can get back to our normally scheduled programming with, uh, with reviewing air guns next week. But uh, have a great week and I really appreciate you watching.